And so into the ring comes our judge, Stephen Bardwell, for the toy group, escorted in by Anne McDonald, vice chairman of the Crofts Committee. And there she is. Big moment for him. He's a Yorkshire Terrier man originally. He's had success with all sorts of breeds, and uh, he really loves his toy dogs. And he's going to have a marvelous collection here. Well, beside me is Frank Kane. Uh, who will be commentating with me on this lovely group as we see the first dog coming in, the Affen Pincher. And here's the Australian Silky Terrier, the Sydney Silky. And the Bichon Frise. Followed by the Bolognese. And the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. The Chihuahua, this is the long coat version. The smooth coat Chihuahua. And here's the smooth coat, <laughs> full of mischief coming in now. The Chinese crested. And the Chinese crested dog. The Coton de Tulia. One of the rarer breeds in the toy group. And the English Toy Terrier. A very young handler with it. And here's the, here's the Griffon coming in now, a rough Griffon. And the Havanese. First time for CCs for this breed at Crufts today. There's the Italian Greyhound, elegant. Lifting its feet high as it should. And the Japanese chin. Here's the, the King Charles Spaniel, the second of the Royal Spaniel breeds. We had the Cavalier earlier. Little lion dog here, the Lochin. And here's the Maltese. This looks beautiful. And there coming in is the miniature pincher. The fluttering butterfly dog, the papillon. And the Pekingese. And here comes the Pomeranian. And the pug. And the Yorkshire Terrier. I mean, with style there. Judge just taking his first walk round the best of breed winners, taking in their outlines. Often it's the outline and shape of the breed which denotes breed type, the right proportions of body and leg and top line. As a powder puff Chinese crested, we often see them hairless, but this is a soft veil of hair. Looking back at the outline of the English Toy Terrier and the very energetic Griffon. These are the, the companion dogs, aren't they, generally, Frank? The, the lap dogs, the companion dogs, but the uh, real dogs underneath the, and often all that. And often bred down from sporting breeds, miniaturised versions of the sporting breeds, which were bred and developed for the lady of the house as companions and lap dogs. Well, they give great pleasure. The toy group, it's a lovely group of dogs for Stephen Bardwell to be able to judge here today. So it's a great honor to be here judging at Crufts. Looking at the expression and alertness of the Pomeranian there. And we have a Yorkshire Terrier not on a red box, which is nice to see.
now the first of our breeds is the Affenpinscher. This is a, of German origin and also known as the little black devil dog. And he gets that from his monkeyish face, sparkling eyes and expression. <laughs> Look, they're a rustic dog, should be untrimmed, cobby and full of character. It's the first time this one's exhibited here in the UK. But highly, highly successful. It recently won Best of Breed at the Westminster Dog Show in New York. However, the, the Affenpinscher, they're a dog with minimal angulation, which means they don't stride out. They should go with a floating goose step, lifting their legs a little higher, and cobby body, the tail, just carried over the back. And the hand are just taking him there. Just, and we see the strutting style. He's just being a little bit sticky on the move. He's not uh, striding with style tonight, this dog. He stopped when he wanted to stop, not when the handler did. Yes, and uh, untrimmed. They should have a rustic look. So there it is, the Affen picture. Well, there are only 13 of these Australian silkies here today, and the name implies they originate in Australia, known as the Sydney Silky. Far from being a quiet little lap dog, the background comes from a mixture of Australian and Yorkshire Terriers. Friendly and independent. And they are the, a toy breed with the temperament of a terrier. They could still catch vermin. And of course, like the Yorkshire Terrier, the colour of the coat is very important. Blue and shades of tan. That level top line there, striding out, a sign of good balance and construction. And another visitor from Europe, from Norway. Now the distinctive outline of the Bichon Frise. This is a breed which was developed in the Mediterranean, one of the white Mediterranean breeds, which are distinguished by this white coat and black pigmentation of nose and eye rims. Although it originated perhaps in Tenerife, it was developed in France, and the word frise describes the soft corkscrew curls of the coat, which is a feature of the breed. Yes, this was a breed recognised by the French Kennel Club as late as 1934, but it's a breed that's been seen for a long time. And happy little dogs, they love being the centre of attention, extrovert, full of confidence and intelligence, and loves companionship. They're standing for the region, we see here the dark pigmentation round the eyes and the nose, giving it a very endearing expression, that's very stylish. This is the Bolognese, 16 month old Hope, comes from the Netherlands, another foreign dog here. It's an ancient breed, charming, intelligent, small dog from North Italy originally, a Bichon type as you can see, but with a non-shedding coat. But as you can see also, regular grooming is going to be needed and that coat's never trimmed. And they should be sturdy and square, and they should strut out with style. Again, pigmentation very important. This coat is of loose flocks. It's not tightly curled. It, it, again, they should need careful grooming to keep them looking like this, regular grooming. Her owner says she's a happy little dog, and she bred her as well. They may be the smallest breeds, but they've got, they've got giant temperaments, which is what's made them so popular as house companions and lap dogs. And here is the first of the Royal Spaniels, the Cavalier King Spaniel. This one's a Blenheim, the most popular colour, this rich chestnut and white. The breed are, uh, comes from the time of Charles I and Charles II, who developed them and had them in their royal court. It gets Blenheim from the Blenheim Palace, 
uh, where he was very popular. Now this one has come from America. He's bred in G Germany, I believe, but he's been s campaigned in America and very successful. They should have a broad, fairly flat skull, lovely level top line. They really are a sporting spaniel in miniature. They're, I said that many of the toy breeds are miniaturized versions, and here we have a sporting spaniel in miniature. And he's a very young dog. This one just 22 months. Dreamer, he's called. Cavalier King Charles. His large, large dark eyes. First of the two Chihuahuas here. There were 238 of these here today. This is the long haired version. The Chihuahua's origins are debatable, but may have come originally from China, but he takes his name from the Mexican state of Chihuahua, obviously. American dog lovers eventually refined the breed and it's a highly respected toy dog. And Poppy here is uh, a 23 month old bitch. The domed head and the large ears and large eyes are features of the Chihuahua in both coats. Again, full of confidence. The tail carried like a scimitar over the back. In the long head, it's got some feathering on it, as we see here. They should stride out well, maintaining a level top line. And this ring is quite a long walk for those little dogs. And here is the smooth coat you are on the table. They share exactly the same standard, but this one has a smooth, flat coat, silky on top. Again, the judge now looking at those dark eyes, checking the coat texture. And again, although they're toy dogs, they have to be well constructed so they can live sound and healthy lives and move well. This one is the top winning Chihuahua in the country for last year. The top winning Smooth had a lot of best in shows and group wins, so he's highly successful. Well, his size makes him very easy to take absolutely anywhere. Carrying that level top line, getting his hocks well underneath him, which they need to propel themselves along. There, just showing off his ears and alertness to the judge, and again, full of confidence on the move. Well, this is the Chinese crested dog. This is uh, a four year old uh, Lisa, it's a bitch, of course. They come in two varieties, the hairless, and as Frank was saying earlier, the powder puff. This is the powder puff one, and uh, lovely veil of long soft hair they come in a mixture of colors but this is uh, definitely a white with just gray tinges to the ears now this date back to the Han dynasty where in a bigger version a bigger size they were used as guardians of the treasure houses um, but then they've been miniaturized uh, often we see them with the hairless with a veil of hair down the, the back and on their, their feet. This one, as you say, the powder puff. Uh, less numerous, but again, coming from a huge competition today and, and winning well. Yes, 164 feet to get here. Came all the way from the Czech Republic for this moment of glory. Now, the distinctive outline of the Coton de Tuliar. Now, we see this rise over the loin and a fall to the tail. That is absolutely correct for the breed. They rise to give a powerful loin. Now, they get their name Coton de Tuliar because the coat is like old-fashioned hard cotton. Now, it takes a lot of grooming. They don't shed, but they take a lot of, they take a lot of grooming. And it 
It's known, of course, as the royal dog of Madagascar, first recognised in 1990, but has existed in Madagascar for several hundred years. This is a breed which is becoming increasingly popular. They make fantastic companions. Again, the dark pigmentation sets off the white coat. They may have a few biscuit markings in the coat, which is quite permitted. And the very natural movement it has with that lovely flowing coat. Yes, if you want to keep the, the coat, like we can see here. Again, standing confidently for the judge to look at expression and very accurate on the move here. This is the English Toy Terrier, black and tan, the oldest of Britain's native toy breeds. And uh, it's a 20 month year old uh, bitch called Pepsi. The handler is Ryan Ross in there, a young man. And uh, before 1960, it was known as a miniature black and tan. Now, I talked about them being a miniaturized version. We saw the Manchester Terrier in the Terrier group yes, uh, earlier in the show. This one, again, bred down from the Manchester Terrier, sharing the same markings of black and tan with thumbprints, finer bones, and they should move in an extended trot, which we see very well here. Clean, narrow heads, curving outline. This is really striding out well. Ears like shaped like a candle flame, that's a feature of the breed. Although they are a toy dog, they can still see off the odd rattle and, and vermin, yes, I'm sure. Full of character. And this one's had a very good day because you need three challenge civets to become a champion, and this one's won its third today. So it's now not only Cruft's best of breed, but it's a champion. And here's the Griffon Bruxellois. This is a, a very sturdy, compact dog, hailing from Belgium, the, also coming in a smooth coat. Here we have a hard red coat on this one. Now, this should be cobby, compact, with his large eyes, broad skull, and full of character. I think you can see the traces of Affen Pincher in the ancestry there, this little dog. A variety of this little dog appeared in the painting by the Flemish artist Jan van Eyck as long ago as 1434. This is the Havanese. Comes, of course, from uh, Cuba originally came as a result of either Spanish, Spanish colonists or Italian traders and ended up as plaything of the wealthy. It's a lively toy dog, not in any way delicate, and this two-year-old bitch called Guinevere is probably no exception to the rule. Now, this is the first time they've had challenge certificates at Cruft, so now we can, have a, we can have a champion in this country. Now, they may look a little bit like a Lars Apso, but you, there, are, there are great differences. They're sturdier in build, strong in the skull, large, distinctive eyes, and they should strut. The, the top line has a little rise over the loin, and they're full of style and full of character. Medium length of body, well clear of the ground, variety of different colors allowed as well from white through cream to black blue silver and even chocolate very smart wonderful expression from those almond shaped eyes now the distinctive outline of the Italian Greyhound another one which is a miniaturized version of a sporting breed the Greyhound here the curving lines nothing to hide on an Italian Greyhound that rise over the loin elegance in the head and fine bone yes these are dogs which can claim a long ancestry really back to the days of Pompeii Evidence that small hounds of this type existed can even be found in the ancient tombs of Egypt. But it was in the Italy of the Romans that this little dog 
was bred to perfection. There's something about exquisite about the Italian Greyhound. Fine bone, this wonderful detailed head and this high stepping action which the breed has to have. It must lift its legs quite high but also cover the ground. And this three and a half year old uh, bitch, Roos, is a visitor here from the Netherlands. Fine coat and skin, a picture of elegance. Well, this is the Japanese chin, an oriental aristocrat in both bearing and demeanor. Originated in China, made his way to Japan as a gift from the empress of one country to the empress of the other. The breed is known in some parts of the world as the Japanese spaniel, and the word chin means cat-like. Now they're compact and cobby, fine, strong bone, and this silky coat, this one, a black and white, we'll also see them in shades of lemon and white. They should have a, quite a high stepping action. This one picks its feet up quite nicely in front. Very typical of the breed. Now the, again, we see the distinctive and typical action of the Japanese chin. Now, the second of the Royal Spaniels, this is the King Charles Spaniel, again, favoured in the court of Charles II. Compact, a refined version of a sporting Spaniel, but quite different from the Cavalier, a dome skull and a shorter foreface distinguishes it. Well, this is a multi-champion, American, Luxembourg, and Finnish champion, five-year-old dog called Benny. And it's a tricolour. We saw the Blenheim. Here we have a tricolour. Now, this is striding up very well. The breeders have made great headway with this breed, developing them in their temperament, now much more confident. And this one is really covering the ground well. Hard, level top line, and that wagging tail, which denotes confidence. All the sporting Spaniels have to wag their tail. It's a sign of Spaniel temperament. And this one has it in bucket, bucket loads. And another breed, best of breed winner, from Germany. This is the Lauchen, little lion dog. It's a breed whose origins are a little bit obscure, probably European, does have affinity with the Bichon. The breed's home country is listed as France, but they've been seen uh, for many years in Spain and Germany as well. Relatively rare until the 1960s. Now this is one of the sturdier of the toy breeds. They should be squarely built, they're bone, quite strong, and they've got, and this one's very, <laughs> very playful, showing his confidence. He's not phased by winning best of breed and getting into the group ring. Just a bit flamboyant with his action there. They should move smoothly and accurately in front. They get the louchen or lion dog from the clip. They've got this mane of hair at the front, and then clipped hind quarters and this plume on the end of the tail. Now, this one looks exquisite. It's the Maltese. Again, one of the white Mediterranean breeds. Evidence of the breed in Malta going back to Roman times and spread throughout Europe by the merchant traders. Now, there were at first a, a, a sleeve dog, which meant that the ladies put keep them in the sleeves of their dresses. Yes. They're supposed to be compact and cobby with his white silky coat. And again, the dark pigmentation is much prized. And it's a coat that needs a lot of attention to keep it looking long and silky and soft and white as that. And the crowd love it. And the movement is just tremendous. There's something quite spectacular about a Maltese on the move. And this has a great track record. This was reserve best in show at the World Show in Helsinki last year. So, and look at that wonderful top line, exquisite dark eyes, and presented to perfection by the handler here. Visiting us from Italy. Well, this breed, the miniature pincher, was developed in Germany from the longer version 
and appearing in the form we see him now about a hundred years ago. Started to become popular here in the UK in the about the 1940s. Smart, clean in outline, lustrous short coat, sturdy and compact little dog. Now, the smallest of the pincher breeds. We've seen the Doberman pincher in the working group and the, and the, the middle-sized pincher. Here we have the, the miniature. High stepping, the standard asks for a hackney action, which means it must lift its leg, bend its leg at the knee, and get its hocks well underneath it, like a hackney pony or horse. And again, short-backed, sloping from the withers to the set of the tail, distinctive sloping back line of the minch pincher. This is very prancing, it's like a pony here going. Yes, and with those wonderful pricked ears, they do have a great sense of hearing. So they make good little guard dogs too. Wedge-shaped head, pricked ears, very alert. Judge now looking at the papillon, the the fluttering butterfly dog, and it gets its name from this its large ears, which when spread look like the spread wings of the butterfly. Fine boned and dainty, sharply pointed muzzle, alertness in its expression, and a silky single coat. And of course there is also a floppy-eared version, but we, we haven't seen them here many times, that's called a faline. Uh, exquisite little toy dogs, lively, they require and like human companionship, happy, easy to train. They've even been successful in obedience, would you believe? And they're fine-boned and dainty and long-lived. They're very versatile, Peter, as you say. Agility, obedience, and wonderful characters to live with. And have a good lifespan as well. Nice, long-lived little dogs. Fluttering and dainty on the move, as a papillon should be. And a new champion to them. Stephen Bardwell there looking at the Pekingese. This is champion Yaki Ua Cantonite, a five-year-old dog called Eric. It's been in this ring before. Bertie Easton, its owner, uh, used to be an absolute regular in the best of breed ring here for the group judging. This is the Pekingese. Now we'd see the judge picking up the Pekingese there. It's because they should pick up very solid and heavy for their size. And all of the weight of the dog is at the front. They're broad chested, good rib cage, and narrow in the hind quarters, which give it this distinctive rolling movement, the Pekingese roll. And the handler taking it at just the right pace for the breed. Of course, this kennel has produced a best in show winner at Crufts a few years ago. 2003, and, yes. And under reserve best in show winner, highly successful from Scotland. Often thought of as a lap dog, but nothing could be further from the truth. These dogs think they're big. It's a real aristocrat dating back to the Tang dynasty. This one known as Uar Cantona, so a great character and a big winner. now the buoyant Pomeranian. Fine boned and dainty, looks like a little jaffer on legs. It's short backed, short necked, and the tail plumed right over the back. This was the favorite of Queen Victoria, and she actually exhibited her dogs in the early shows at Alexandra Palace. Yes, dainty little extroverts, the smallest of the Spitz type of dog. A light-hearted, active, sweet-tempered and affectionate. He has an appearance of a ball of fluff, doesn't he? A nice soft undercoat there. But the coat texture actually is far from fluffy, and it requires regular attention to keep it looking yes, good. Yes, sh you should have a crisp outer coat. Brisk in its action. It's a Spitz breed, which means it's um, foxy-faced, in, in its shape, neat ears, the tail plumed well over the back. Yes, and at seven years old, this is a little veteran, a little veteran bitch called Victoria.
This is unmistakably the pug. The origin of the breed seems to have come from the Orient, home country listed as China, where snub-nosed dogs have often been in favor. Found his way back to the Europe via traders with the Dutch East India Company. The pug arrived here in England when William III came to the throne. Until 1877, the breed was seen here only in this color form, but uh, blacks are quite common, and the club now allows four different colorings. Now, the standard asks for multimin parvo. That means a lot of substance in a small, compact frame, and this one seems to have that in plentiful supply. This one of the form with a black mask, the black pigment setting off its lovely expression. That's a few wrinkles on the head. Now the Yorkshire Terrier, the blue coat on the body and the rich tan on the head, much prized features in the breed. They're the only breed which are shown in the breed rings on a box which was a tradition going back to, in, in their original days, they were shown on a red satin blanket. They are a terrier in temperament, in a toy dog's frame. The judge just looking there at the texture and color of the coat. Always seems to me a breed that's well aware of its own importance. It's nice carriage and bearing. Comes from the same locale as the Airedale, first seen round about the 1850s, and the old black and tan terriers actually behind the Yorkshire, with other breeds such as the Maltese and the Skye, but they're spectacular on the move, lovely little dogs, enjoys all sorts of games, and has a nice little hunting insect. And, and again, the top line should remain level, the tail carried like a terrier, and sharply pricked ears. Full of confidence there and that lovely tan colouring down the front. And so Steve Bardwell now has the very difficult task of making his shortlist. Now it's a very diverse toy group. The wagging tail of the Cavalier showing again checking the details looking at the expression and eyes on the dog and of course he'll take his time he'll go right the way along the line before making his selection all these dogs as you probably realize as we've been talking frank and i have their own quite distinct characteristics Distinctive top line there, the Coton de Tuliar. This little English toy terrier went very well for the young handler. Very typical all through. And there's the wagging tail of the Griffon. Excellent proportions of the Havanese. Exquisite head of the Italian Greyhound. Again, a lot of overseas winners in this group, which shows this, the attraction of Crufts to the best dogs from overseas. They all want to come here, and it's very good for the British exhibitors too to see the best that the world has to offer. And it's interesting how as the, the foreign visitors have grown, they've won more and more, and they are Bringing, we get the best from all over the world here now. That so that is fantastic. That Maltese looks exquisite there. So uh, I think that will be a tough one to beat here from this distance. We've not had our hands on. Very alert. The spread wings of a butterfly in those ears. The substance. Low set Pekingese. <laughs> the Jaffa on legs. The Pomeranian. <laughs> And the pug, so distinctive there. Alert, raring to go, always. 
Little dogs, but big packages, all of them. Immaculate top line there. It's lovely and straight, isn't it? Beautiful. So where are we going with this? So Steve Bardwell, is he going to pick from the rear end first? Is he going to pick from the other end? Where is he going to pick from? Well, he'll get he's his having another good look, and he's giving that Yorkie a good look. He's an absolute specialist in Yorkies, so you know he's got to see something special there before he'll necessarily choose it. He's had a good extra look at several. Now, I'm not sure if he's... Oh, he is picking out, yes. The Bichon Frise comes in, and the Bolognese. Oh, sorry, it's the Coton de Tullia and the Havanais, and the Maltese. The Pekingese and the Pomeranian. Nice to see them coming out. And the Yorkshire Terrier. Well, that was a pretty quick selection. And I see the English Toy Terrier has been shortlisted. That's very good for the uh, young handler and a beautiful specimen of the breed. Well, as we look along the line there, it's very interesting selection indeed. So there's the Bichon. Here's the Bichon Frise, the white dog with the dark pigmentation, level top line and the plume carried over the back and those soft corkscrew curls in the coat. Known as Fonzie. A band too cool for school. And now the... The Coton de Tulliard, the distinctive top line that rise over the loin, the low set tail which can be carried over the back of this one does, and a coat texture which is like hard cotton, a single coat but requires a lot of attention. This has gone very well and so has this one. This young handler has got the very best out of this English toy terrier. Again this extended trotting action that rise over the loin and a low set tail and the distinctive black and tan markings wedge-shaped head and ears shaped like a candle flame. This is very impressive. Full of confidence, and so is the handler. Just 20 months old, this little bitch. Just getting it to use its ears there. There we are. How alert are we today? Very. That's nice to see. Nice young handler there. And here we go with the Havanese. A jaunty and springing action in the Havanese. Broad in the skull and these almond-shaped eyes. This top line which rises a little to the tail set and a tail set high and carried over the back. Now... You said you couldn't see past this one, Frank. Well, from here it looks wonderful. The, the Maltese, cobby and compact, this silky white coat, level top line, and this exquisite head and expression. Dark eyes, dark pigmentation. This looks irresistible from here. We'd all like to have one of these in our city at home, I'm sure. He's come all the way from Rome to be here. Runner-up at the World Show in Helsinki last year. Now the... Perky Pom, the Pomeranian, the smallest of the Spitz breeds, short-backed, this tail carried over the back, and this foxy face and expression, and full of buoyant, buoyant and confident, a little spin. <laughs> the Pomeranian pirouette, I think, there. They're all giving their show act, aren't they? They really are. Here, very popular, the Yorkshire Terrier, this four-year-old Mike, he's called. He's come from Sweden to be competing here today. Again, the rich tan colouring, three shades of tan, deepest at the roots, fading away, and steel blue, the body coat. The and last but by no means least, who <laughs> are Cantona, the Pekingese with Bert Easton. The rolling gait of the Pekingese comes from a chunky body, a broad chest, and solidly built underneath that coat. Another of these yaki Pekingese 
won Best in Show here 2003 for Bert Easton. Well, Steve Barwell done a marvellous job with this. Very quick, very efficient, very direct. Knows exactly what he's looking for and what he's looking at. There's the Coton. Toy Terrier. The Havanese. The Maltese with those wonderful black eyes and nose. The little Pomeranian. The Yorkshire Terrier not on its box. And the dignified bearing of the Pekingese there with this dark pigmentation of the face. A last look. The boards are there. Steve Bardwell is about to make his decision. And he's walking straight. For he can't see past the Maltese either. It's the Maltese from Italy wins the toy group here. And he looked looked a showstopper on the move four-year-old Shasha from Rome in Italy Sinisita Shasha Baron, Baron Colon in second place the Pomeranian is come from Ireland and seven-year-old I believe so it just shows it is it's a veteran and marvelous look and at that the Manchester toy terrier gets group three the and English toy terrier rather and well deserved and they're absolutely delighted Jim Handler they? there well deserved he put on a sterling performance and the peak gets the last spot now Bert Easton has a triumph of sorts yet again as he takes group four so it's the Maltese we'll see later competing for best in show a very sporting young handler. There we are. The toy group winner is this exquisite Maltese from Italy. Owned by Francis Prosperi. This is an absolutely sweet dog with great character. Well, I'm sure it has. How nice to see. Well, the award being presented for the toy group by the Dodger and by Countess Rothermere. Being presented to Francis Prosperi. And he'll be competing in, well, just about one hour from now, they'll be back for best in show. What a moment. Just have time to get a breather and relax and... Uh, and there's the, the wonderful, oh. the, the crowd very pleased to see this marvellous performance by this young handler and his beautiful English toy terrier. Very well deserved and <laughs> very well. He'll have he had, he's so confident, how splendid. He'll have something to tell his teacher at school tomorrow, won't I'm he, sure. Won't he though? What a moment. Well, it's a great moment for all of them in that ring. Some wonderful toy dogs. I love looking at these toys. They are fantastic little dogs with great hearts. And yet another major rosette for Bert Easton. But there's the Maltese looking as spectacular as it's possible to be. And about to do a spin before going for its lap of honor. Hasn't put a foot wrong all night. Great carriage, composure.